Republic Bank, we're the one for you. In a time of climate change and its massive impacts globally, Guyana's environmental stewardship of its forestry resources and protection of the terrestrial ecosystems makes it a standout country in terms of environmental protection. In the Region 1 area of Guyana, which we refer to as the Northwest region, you can find Guyana's largest and most intact mangrove ecosystem in an area we refer to as the Burima Mora Passage. This area encompasses just under 50,000 hectares, which includes 14,000 hectares of mangroves, mainly Warau's have used this area for centuries and they've done so in a very sustainable manner. However, with the developmental pressures in Guyana at the moment, there is urgent need for its safeguarding and protection by the indigenous communities. Having the research center located in the Warao community of Imbatero will not only afford access to international, national and regional research, on coastal and marine ecosystems and their peoples, but it will also, very importantly, contribute to the development of research tourism as an alternative livelihood option for the Warao community of Mbetero that has very little commercial interest in terms of development.
Hi, my name is Stanley Sam from Embotero Community. Since the um, Embotero community started to exist there, we, um, we seen a lot was been done during the past. And um, from 2022, started a project there, and some of our, our, our um, people in the community are also benefiting from the project. And a lot of a lot of uh, our youths was been involved. I think that the resource center is. Um, I also think it will be benefited in the community in time to come, because I can see a lot of people can involve in the, in the tourists, also like going out doing a tour guide and so on. Tourism in our community is very strange for the first time, but in time to come. The, in, the people of Imbatero will um, learn more about tourism. I'm Bob Holtzman. I'm a PhD student at the University of Southampton. I'm in the archaeology department there, and I'm here conducting an ethnographic study of how the Warao people use canoes to adapt to their environment in Imbotera. The canoe is really an essential adaptation to this community. I've, I've asked a number of people, what if canoes disappear in a few years? And no, nobody can, can quite envision that situation because the economy absolutely depends upon dug out canoes to be able to access the resources in the forest. Just upstream of where we're sitting, the creek gets much, much smaller. Power boats can't navigate. Uh, it's too narrow, it's too shallow, it's too overgrown with, with foliage. And small canoes are the only way that they can navigate to get to the areas where they will catch crabs, where they will collect hearts of palm, known as cabbage here, where, where they uh, collect firewood, where they do fishing in the swamp. Without, without the canoe, none of those things are possible, and this whole village would not be possible without them. Our traditional use is canoe. We use canoes a lot to go in the river, to go in the cricket, it is comfortable to go in the cricket. So when entering Imbotero Creek, you will pass families on their way to their farms. You'd pass students in their small canoes with their beautifully painted paddles sometimes as well, reflecting the rich biodiversity of the place. And you would even pass mothers who are going about their daily chores with little babies, but it's so mind-blowingly beautiful for our international visitors especially that are often very thrilled by the experience of having our research center located in the midst of this incredible community that has kept their traditional ways intact. And right across from the Material Research Center, you have a line of Warao stilted houses where you're literally living in the midst of their daily activities. So the Embotero Research Center presents an opportunity for local and international researchers to come and study our environment. So it presents itself in a way that we can learn, we can share our knowledge, and we can educate others and welcome others to conduct more studies. My name is Sira Singh and I am a final year research student at the University of Ghana, Faculty of Natural Science in the Department of Biology program. At in Botero, I will be conducting my final year research on the Bundari and Buck crabs, which are the most consumed crab species in the area, as well as around Guyana. Crabs are one of the main sources of proteins for Guyanese, especially the Waro people. 
So I will be determining if um, the crabs are safe for consumption or not. It is one of the main sources of income for the Waro people of the villages because they use it to sell and earn an honest income. I am hoping to find that the heavy metal concentrations from this area is below the, cons the permissible limits, meaning that it's safe for consumption, it's below the World Health Organization's permissible limits. Lead, cadmium, gold, mercury, iron, zinc, chromium, arsenic. They are found all around us, they are found in our bodies, they are found in our foods. But too much of it can cause health risks to humans. We are currently heading to a farm to harvest some bundary and buck crabs. We will find these crabs in swampy or damp um, soil in holes that they have dug as part of their habitats. Okay, so today we have Mr. Uburn and Mr. Aaron. They are both villagers of Imbutero and they will be assisting me in harvesting the crabs today. To harvest the crabs, we first locate the holes that we're sure the crabs are in. We take the cutlass to chop the palm leaves and stuff the holes with them to block the crabs from escaping. After waiting for some time, we come back to the holes and remove the mud, remove the palm leaves, stick our hands inside of the holes to harvest the crabs or we can use this fork stick which is from the mangrove plant. After harvesting the crab, we would take them and store them in a quake. The Imbatera Research Center has proven itself invaluable in yielding very important research already within the first two months of its establishment. The material really showing bright. It's a good community, it's just showing bright. So tourism coming to the community. And I should think that they, they will do much better in time to come. People in the community also benefiting from the project. And a lot of, a lot of our, our youth was been involved, they did what they never did, like uh, flying, flying the drones. It was very important for me to have a component in our project where we were able to look at opportunities for young girls especially. So this ecosystem uh, that's found in the Bremamoor Passage, uh, it's very important that we have a mechanism to monitor and manage it. So the girls drone unit are going to provide the essential services of going out every quarter to conduct monitoring exercises to ensure that any unauthorized removal of mangroves or clearances are reported to the relevant agencies who will now go in there and take corrective action. Their role in terms of the monitoring program of the Bremamoor Passage will be very invaluable in helping us to preserve and manage these important ecosystems. Uh, we could not be prouder how well the girls are doing and the possibilities that even extend for their services beyond monitoring the Bremamoor Passage.
In a time when science is needed to drive all of the policy-making decisions, not only at the national, but also at the community level, we are very proud that we have played a small part by having Guyana's first coastal and marine research center in the beautiful village of Imbatero.